What's up, Solar Warriors? Today is Tuesday, March 26, 2024. My name is Jarrett McAllister, the virtual solar pro. And if you're watching this on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to share it with your fellow solarpreneurs. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you are instantly notified for every training that we are producing. Um, I am rocking here with my main man, Tom Cotter, because our other brother in arms, is out traveling the globe somewhere. Uh, I think he's in Ireland today, Mr. Jonathan Bernasso. But Tommy, what's hey. up, bro? How are you? Good morning, good afternoon, Jarrett and everyone else. Yeah, we got uh, John and Chris uh, being uh, virtual solar pros out there, doing the virtual yeah. nomad thing, right? Love it. Yeah, running their business, which they truly are, because we're getting text messages um, at like 5 a.m. I don't know what time it is. Like what, their yeah, time. Like what time is it where you are, John? Yeah. Grand rising, gents. You know, Bernasa doing his thing. That was awesome. Um, but yeah, I believe he is in uh, he's in Ireland this morning or tonight or tomorrow or where, whatever the time zone difference is. So, no, it's cool. He's still running the business. You guys are all part of the group chats. He's putting together the trainings. He's very much involved and he's able to do that because of our platform here at Power. Um, extremely powerful. So good, good stuff. Um, let's kick off Power Hitter Solar Warrior Tribe training like we do every single week. And we are going to go ahead and do this by sharing some wins. So if you have a win that you'd like to share, Especially if you're brand new on the platform. We love hearing those wins the most, Mr. Bill Conley. Just joking. Um, go ahead and raise your hand, you know. So let's talk about it. And we love hearing about getting homeowners transitioned over to solar. Right, Larry? That's what we like. Helping homeowners go solar. That's our favorite thing to hear about. So we're going to go ahead and start off with Tracy Canoni. What's up, girl? Hey, what you got? good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh well, I got um, a new seller on the platform. Um, she's here today, Patty. Um, I'm What's sorry, up, Patty? I'm probably going to butcher your last name. <laughs> um, but she, uh, I'm, Patty, you there? Hey, hey, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up, Patty? Hey, happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, she's brand new. Met her at Kirkwood. Uh, about a month ago, we started talking about solar, gave her my contact. Um, a month later, she hit me up and uh, was on Power Hour last week and then immediately joined. So I want everyone just to give her some love and um, yeah, see her, you know, I want to see her grow. I have another win too. I have Matthew um, here as well. We, uh, another tier one. He, we put together a proposal for a client um, that does new construction. It was a new build. It was took forever. Finally got him to sign. So that was a long time coming. So two good wins this week. Awesome. Awesome. And Patty, where are you at on, here on the screen? Come back on here. I just wanted to say uh, you met Tracy at, up at up at the wood. Yeah, I'm out here in South Lake Tahoe. Sweet. How how deep was the snow? Um, it's, it's decent, nothing like last year, but it's definitely, uh, clenching for the season. <laughs> you know, um, I was speaking to Tracy and she told me how she ran into you and you were talking about, uh, you know, making the move and transition and solar, you have found the right place. You got a new home here, Patty, and we're excited to watch you grow over here. So welcome. Tracy is an awesome tier three, uh, who could put you in the right direction and help you out with this. Yeah, for sure. Meeting Tracy, it just kind of like planted a seed and I was like, couldn't stop thinking about it. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to hit her up. She was super welcoming. So let's give it a shot. Love it. Love it. Welcome. Welcome to the team. All right. Thanks. Great job, Tracy. All right. Next up, man, we have a few. So this is how we're going to roll it because we are living on time. We're going to go John, Elu, Lauren, Zach, Bill, you be extra quick. And then Jeremiah, and then we're done. All right, John. And then everybody, if you can, just keep it somewhat compact because uh, we do have a huge training ahead. John, what do you got, brother? 
Good to see you. All right, guys. My name is John Young. So I am uh, I'm a little different from most of you. I'm actually New England. So I rep Massachusetts over here, guys. So I do the New England market. I uh, started an enterprise under the power platform. Loving it. Uh, everything is so is way more transparent. Uh, I came from Boundless Energy, Inc. Uh, so comparatively, be, comparatively speaking, uh, power is, gives the client more option of choice unlike them where they just stick you with Jenko Solar and cheapest Solar Edge and you're all set. But power uh, allows you, you know, especially with the fact that I can build, you know, my own business underneath it. I, uh, I bring in two consultants on. Uh, one is Akib. I think he's, I don't know if he joined yet or not, but he's trying to get in here. And another Ali, um, but loving it. Had closed the deal last week that I had, taken from boundless i had already closed it came onto the power platform and then redid it and it's all set he's just had his site survey two day uh thursday and i just got the confirmation so doing good it's looking good love it love it great job brother he's got an enterprise account he's building a team it's no secret you cannot compete against power our options our pricing, our warranty. It's the best in the industry, and he's already crushing the competition, man. So great job, John. Love hearing Thank that. You guys. Thank you. You got it. Aleu. Do I say that right? I feel like Perfect. I butchered that. Perfect. Aleu. Sorry. There we go. Hey, so I have a two-part win, and I always cringe when I get a an installer that I have to pay a, a, a mileage adder for, but this case, it was a good one. Uh, you guys in Southern California have a great partner in John Valentine and Going Up Solar. They're based out of Canyon Lake, uh, you know, inland Temecula area. They came up, did an install for me, 20 panels, Tesla power wall, you know, end phase system. Last Monday, it passed inspection on Thursday. And today I received three referrals from the homeowner. So good installs. Uh, I'll pay that $500 adder anytime I get a guy like that to come up here and do that. He drove his motor home up, his wife cooked breakfast for the crew, and those guys were on site and in and out in three days. Love it, love it, love it. Aleu, that made me feel so good because I actually have an install coming up. Um, same area, LADWP territory, I believe. And I was like, why do we have a travel ad? Why didn't we pick a local EPC? And uh, But it's going up solar. And so I don't mind. I will pay $1,000 extra yep. if i know it's going to be a premium install excellent customer service because what does that equal you guys referrals <laughs> right you're going to make your money 10 20x with premium work and that's what it's all about i have no problem kicking in 500 bucks come on now you guys like that's that's incredible so you just made me feel a whole lot better because yeah i was just asking the pm what's up with that but now i know what's up with that so john john Wife Libby, they drove up in their motor home. They went to Yosemite after they left my account. <laughs> love it. Love it. Great job, Aleo. Thanks. All right. Lauren. Hi. Hey, what's up, everyone? Um, I'm here. I just joined Power This Month out of Denver, Colorado. And Welcome. just got just got our first contract signed last night from a homeowner um, with the help of my mentor, Tommy Linick, and my T3 on there. So What's really cool is this referral actually came from a previous customer of mine uh, when I was doing solar for a different company. And he was going to get set up as an ambassador. But once I talked to him more about it, he's actually just signed up as a seller as well. So happy yeah. to be here and excited. Lauren, first month, helping homeowners go solar building her team she's on fire great job welcome and let me ask you a quick question you said you came from another solar company were yeah. you with them and then you made the jump to power and then if so like what was your reason what did you see in power that you didn't see in your other your previous company yeah so um i was with sunrun inside sales for three years so i've been doing virtual for three years working across the nation um what it was for me was the commission structure is so different, right? I have way more power over that. And then also just having options for homeowners. 
um, which I think someone else just mentioned, right? So I'm used to only seeing one option, <laughs> one price, one panel, right. you know, this is all we have for you. And I wanted to be able to actually be more like a shopper for my customers and let's see what we have. Let's see what works best for you. So that's why I'm here. Incredible. Um, you know, I started my solar career with power in 2019 and this is all I know is multiple different options, different inverters, four different batteries, right? How, how many financing options do you have over here? And the fact that it's a cost of goods sold model, right? Be able to control your margin that the competition cannot win. So great job. Love it, Lauren. You found yourself a good home over here. You're going to love what we got cooking. So thanks so much. Thank you for sharing. All right, Bill, you got 15 seconds. Hey, I don't know why you're so mean to me, Jared. I, I, I try to be nice. And I always try to give props to those people on the team that deserve it. And today, I know. I'm not just about busting, me. busting it's your about, beats. It's about Dan Deal, who's been on the platform for a minute, who had a personal business launch uh, Sunday. And uh, one of the people, his guest was Ali Al. Um, how do you say your last name, Al? But who's here on the platform, Tawil? Tawil. Tawil. Well, we want to welcome Al, who's brand new, came in from a personal business launch on Sunday, here today on Tuesday, and just want to welcome him. Thank, Thank you. you. Love. Thank you Love so much. it, Al. Appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome, man. Welcome. You. And you working with Bill. He, he was with yeah. a, he was with some fruit company I think before so um he's he's mm -hmm. he's coming over to the power. Right. Love it. Welcome brother. You found the right home, man. You're going to love it over here. All right, all right. Bill, you know I'm just teasing with you, man. I love you, bro. <laughs> all right. We'll go Jeremiah, Scott and then Jace and then we out. All right. Jeremiah, what you got, bro? Hey guys, how's it going today? Good. So yeah, we were at the uh, Maryland Home Show that uh, Craig Bloom, Emmett Summers, and and those cats were were doing um, outside of Baltimore. I guess it's been well, maybe a couple of weeks ago. Um, ended up, I was only there one day, and uh, it was a pretty slow day um, as far as you know traffic and leads and stuff went. But I made a connection um, with a with a really cool couple that was there that lived up in um, Carroll County, Maryland, up near the Pennsylvania border. Um, and it was kind of funny because they were on their way out. They were literally leaving. Something happened. They saw me. They came over, wanted to talk to me. Um, I introduced them to Craig and we just kind of, you know, we, we hit it off, uh, set up a little, a little deal with them, did an initial call with them, needed to tweak a couple of things on the, uh, on the proposal and then got together back with them this past Thursday, which I had kind of hairbrainedly forgotten that I was going out of town that day with my wife and she reminded me, but I mean, I mean, it's an old hat to you guys, but I mean, a virtual business, I was literally on Carolina beach in Wilmington, North Carolina with Craig. And we got on the call with this guy, you know, uh, just sort of carved out about an hour and a half of, of my, my day on sort of mini vacation. And we, we knocked it out. Uh, 18,000, I think kilowatt system, you know, panels all over the roof, two batteries just crushed it. And these people were like super happy. And one of the things that, um, and this is actually my my second sale. The first one I closed with the great Sean Domianis uh, with with his help as my T three. And you know, since Emmett and I worked this, uh, or um, Craig and I worked this event together, you know, used him as a T three on this one. But yeah, he and I tag teamed it, man. It was it was awesome, and it was funny because you know, just as you know, from the sales perspective, obviously, you know, we have some great stuff, hardware, you know, stat savings and things like that, of power, but. At the end of the call, one of the things that really jumped out at me that this, you know, older couple, really sweet, very nice. And they were just like, look, I just want to tell you guys that, and they didn't even want to talk to any other companies. They were in the middle, you know, of sort of the beginning process of exploring this when they met us at that event. And they said, look, more than anything, the reason why we got together with this and, and did this with you guys, and they paid cash, by the way, it was just, you know, they just, they knocked it out. And they were like, you are two of the nicest men that we've ever met in our lives. And so that goes a long way. They, you know, these people are buying us as well as power and as well as our solution. And obviously we saved them a boatload of money, you know, to, to do what they did, which is a no brainer. So it was just all those little things, those hundred moving parts kind of come together um, in a situation like this. But yeah, like I said, on vacation, sitting on, you know, sitting on Carolina beach, not physically, I was in my hotel room, it was a little windy out, but you know, I wouldn't have put it past me. I'd have been out there with my laptop, like physically on the beach if it was a little nicer, but yeah. I mean, that's, that's yeah. how we do it. Right. But yeah. So number two of, you know, who knows how many in the future, 
looking forward to uh, looking for some, some momentum going forward and many more to come. Awesome. Awesome. Great story, Jeremiah. Absolutely. Dude, he's crushing it. He's helping homeowners while on vacation. Who wouldn't carve out a quick little hour and a half to, you know, help save an older couple hundred thousand dollars and over the next 25 years. So great job there, brother. And people buy from those who they like, right? So, you know, obviously you guys made a great impression on them. They felt no need to go anywhere else. So you earned their trust. Great job, brother. All right. Scott, what do you have? And you guys, sorry, I, I, we got to keep them somewhat short because we got to move on. But what do you got, brother? Gotcha, brother. One of my uh, newer guys on my team, so excited and proud of him. He did his launch with Bobby and uh, I. We did the presentation on Sunday. He had 31 people on his launch. I'm so impressed. Um, yeah, I was, he rocked it. So That's he's awesome. already, he's got a couple uh, appointments set. Uh, he's got one lady that is joining today. And uh, yeah, so, so proud. So I can't let him outdo me. So I scheduled my relaunch with Bobby on the 14th of uh, April. So let's get it, man. Love it, Scott. Team is growing. People see the value in the platform and it is a no brainer. Also, they're able to take advantage of uh, the big wave, waving the $99 activation. It's a great time to join power. All right, Jace, what's up, bro? Yeah, there you go. All right, so I know, Jared, you're not going to share this win because you're so humble, but I think you should share with us because you helped me out in learning. I didn't I didn't gain nothing from what we did, but I gained a lot of knowledge, and I appreciate everything you did. So why don't you share with everyone what, what, what you offer this team so they know that you can count, they can count on you to step up and, and show them what's up. I will keep it quick, bro, and I appreciate the kind words. Um, Jace, who lives in Boise, Idaho, you know, it's not a great market for solar where he's at. Just like where I'm at up in North Idaho, there's not a ton of solar opportunity here. Um, so we, you know, we reach out, we sell virtually. I had a lead. He's been itching. I mean, he shows up to all the trainings. He wants to learn. And he said, bro, next time you got one, bring me on. And so I did, right? I had a homeowner, a friend reach out in California and I brought him through the entire process from building out the proposal, him coming on the presentation. We, it was actually a three-step process, right? We initially presented, we had a follow-up, and then we had a final follow-up to do the paperwork, brought him along. Um, and then he saw, man, she was stoked. She was saving. How much money was it, Jace? Like, uh, four, was it 426000 or something over 25 something like years? Something crazy, something crazy. Some some crazy number cash deal in the Bay area, PG and E. She has like a six, $700 bill monthly. Anyways, I'll just want to leave this as a pro tip for you tier threes out there or for anyone out there. If you have a team member that you can bring on to a presentation, even if they're not, you know, a tier one, tier three split or whatever, it is good to do because one iron sharpens iron. And when you're teaching, it makes you that much better. And number two, is when you bring someone on and your homeowner said, you know, you're like, Hey, I want to introduce you to Jace. He's actually new with our company. I'm training him. What else does that do? You guys, it positions me, it positions me as an authoritative figure. They're like, man, if this guy is training him, he must know what he's talking about. So that's just a quick little pro tip. I wanted to leave you guys with bring on a teammate to your presentations it uh, lightens the vibe. It makes it cool. And Jace did a great job because he didn't inject himself on anything. He just smiled and nodded and said yes and <laughs> was super stoked. All right. Um, we are like out of time. Zach, can you can bust it in like 10 yep, seconds? Yep, Where are you, what are you doing? All right. So, so first of all, Solar Growing Up is a TST installer that we brought to the platform. So y'all are welcome for that. And we have a bunch of badass other installers that we brought to the platform. If you want to know who they are, reach out to me. The second thing is um, I just want to talk about community involvement. Just closed a real estate transaction yesterday. Why am I talking about real estate? Because in the last two years, I've closed $5.4 million of real estate from one set of clients that I met through community involvement, just like I'm doing right now, passing out flyers. Get involved in your freaking community if you're in a market that you can sell it. Obviously, Northern Idaho can't sell it there. But guess what? If you're in a market that's blue, get out there and freaking talk to your community. That's all I got. Love it. Great tip. Great tip. And uh, yeah, thank you for that, man. And dude, thank you for bringing on uh, Going Up Solar, bro. I'm looking forward to them doing my install.
All right, Aquip, I saw your hand raised. We're going to move on. We're going to get you next week because we are up against it, brother. But uh, with that said, Tommy, let's go ahead and uh, any quote we have, we're going to blow right through that. We're going to skip that. And let's, let's just talk about some events coming up. What do we have coming up, Tom? So the rhythm through the week is uh, Power Hour on Monday nights, which is where the power business is explained. You can see on the screen that we've got all of our April trainings planned out. Next week, we were talking about this in the chat, but uh, Craig Bloom, Emmett Summers, uh, East Coast legends and OGs of solar are going to be talking about uh, events training. So as we're headed into spring with Earth Day and, and all of the new you know events that come up locally, definitely you want to be a part of this. Uh, you can look through the rest of that, but powercalendar.com has tons of different trainings. Jarrett, I'm going to let you uh, jump in here and talk about uh, the big wave. Yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, and quickly, event, you guys, was Solar Masterclass, right? I mean, that's next Wednesday. Do not forget that. Big wave. We are still, we are waiving the initial $99 activation when you join Power. That The deadline on that is March 31st. So coming up. So anybody who was interested in joining Power, now is the time to do it. Um, and then moving on, what else do we have here? All right. The future of solar. Um, I believe this man, Charles Wilson, sold Jonathan Bernasso. I, I mean, it's in a text somewhere, but basically yeah, he, he sold Jonathan, Jonathan Bernasso's parents' house. Nine years ago. Their very first solar, uh, solar for their home. Okay. Nine years later, he is now joining the team with Jonathan and doing his launch party. It's on March 28th, uh, 6 p.m., Pacific. Go ahead and register at mysolarbusiness.com. Bobby Smith is going to be hosting the launch party and it would be amazing to bring your guests to. So just wanted to share that with Jonathan wanted me to share that with everybody. And then he also wanted to say, Hey, you guys, let's say happy birthday. Jonathan Bernasso's mother's birthday today, 60 years young. Happy birthday, Mrs. Bernasso. All right. Um, as we know, SolarCon's coming up here April 18th through the 20th. Myself and a bunch of other leaders will be out there. Get your tickets. There is a promo code Jonathan. You can also use promo code POWER to get a discount if, you feel, if you're going to be attending. Next slide. What do we got? And Power World. Obviously, we've talked about it. We'll talk more about it next week, but got to get your tickets to Power World. This is a ridiculously low price, so get in there. We've talked about the dates. We are going to move on from that. And uh, we, <laughs> now we're going to get to our trading topic. And real quick, I just want to say, I love hearing all your guys' wins. It is fan freaking tastic. So many, come, so many people coming on here, sharing their wins, sharing the love. We all love hearing it. And it's great to see so many people thriving here at Power. All right. Um, so our training today is with probably one of the hottest financing partners in the industry right now. Some of you guys use them exclusively in California for their shift product where you can do battery, no storage. Um, I'd like to bring on Isha Richardson and my other man on here. Where is he? It was Matt Mark. Dave House. David House. Dave House from Everbright. Where are you guys? Let's highlight them and bring them on. Isha, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Um, you are here. Are Perfect. And we have David right here. Let's go ahead and highlight you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. great. Doing great. Good, good, good. good. All right. Yeah. So tell us about you guys' amazing PPA lease products. You guys are actually crushing it in the game, giving uh, Sonova definitely a run for their money. Um, and we welcome competition over here at Power, right? We love options. So the floor is yours, my friend. Aisha, will you want to take that question or would you like me to? Oh, you no, know, you can take it over. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much for those kind comments, Jared. Yeah, we're very excited here at the Everbright Company. Uh, we are growing exponentially for companies like yourself that are excited about helping homeowners to save money and convert to clean, renewable energy. Uh, my name is David House. I'm actually one of the trainers here at the Everbright Company. Uh, we are full steam ahead with a lot of different product offerings in over multiple states. 
So even if you're not in California, that is okay because we have expanded into a lot of the other states. Uh, haven't gotten to Florida yet, which is where we are based as our headquarters at this point, but I'm sure in time that that will uh, continue to come as well. Very strong. I, I think that you'll you'll find from our platform and our pricing strategy is, you know, our really corporate mission here is to really provide um, clean energy and to reduce the carbon fo footprint. You know, I, I say that with no pun intended because that's what everybody usually does say. But we are owned by a Fortune 200 company. You can look it up on, on the stock exchange, uh, which is called Next Era. And that is the mission of this company that wants to be, you know, completely with all of the the energy that we provide all across the United States, carbon free by the year 2035. So it's a big goal, but that's what we are committed to. And that's what we are all about. So we our platform allows you guys to be able to show cash deals. Uh, but as far as the, the financing products that we offer, which basically are summarized as two categories, one is a RIC. Uh, which we stand for retail installment contract. And then our second products would either be a lease or a power purchase agreement. Really depends upon where you're located. Uh, you do have to check with your utility uh, to see which one of those is, is uh, utilized. In a nutshell, it's just wording semantics as that we change in the contracts. Those leases and PPAs are going to work pretty much the same. And basically, in a nutshell, um, you know, it's going to be priced out of per kilowatt um, basis kind of thing. So with that said, Jared, uh, that's a little bit about us. My question to you uh, is what would be best accomplished in the time that we have today that you would really like me to land here on the team? Yeah, you know, um, I mean, definitely you could talk about. So one of the key products that I absolutely, well, there's a few things, man. I really like Everbright. Um, since okay. you guys have come on, I think you're, first of all, the platform is very user friendly for the most part. Um, sometimes easier than the competition. I do like that, but your products, one, you have an amazing product, um, and that's power shift, I'm right? Sorry. Power shift being the opportunity to add battery. It's, it's the only leasing or PPA, uh, that's out there really that allows us to offer batteries without backup for self-consumption mode. And that's huge here in California, especially, you know, when people want to see the absolute lowest payment, they're like, look, I live next to PG and E or SoCal, it's there. I'm on the hospital grid and I'm not concerned with blackouts, but they need batteries. Um, they're able to save that money on the hardware and the labor um, and really get that price per watt down. Why don't you talk a little bit about that, about that product? Um, and yeah, yeah I'm sure it's yeah, huge. I've Absolutely. And if, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen and I'm actually going to share, share a little training document that we have here as well, uh, which I call the finance training. So all of these modules and to kick this off too, uh, I, Jared, I will be sending to you uh, an email at the conclusion of today, but you can then forward it all to your team. So one of the things that we're doing um, as our best to, and that is, is to get you guys up and running as quickly as possible with video trainings. So this uh, email that I will be sending out uh, specifically for even new and existing users, highly recommend that you click on each link. You do need to be signed into the Everbright platform with username and password, but click on each of these links to watch short videos. They're two minutes, four minutes. I think maybe the longest one is about eight minutes, but we have some new and exciting features that are changing as far as being able to do multiple profiles, being able to do in proposal design editing, basically taking your proposal and going right to the credit check and sending the contract out. So a lot of great new features and things that are, are, are being uh, rolled out here if they haven't already been rolled out, including one of our most recent ones, and that is the digital checklist. So away with the old telephone calls where your homeowner has to play phone tag with the company to do the welcome call and the greeting. Uh, we do now that with a digital checklist. It gets that homeowner directly in real quickly uh, to being able to know who Everbright is, know where they're going to find all their information, documentations, contracts, et cetera, and the like. So were you, uh, real quick, were, were you saying that the digital checklist can replace like a physical welcome call? It does. That awesome. is our per, that is our preferred. So uh, the way it simple simply how it works. Let me go into my uh, deck here just so I can show you on this training deck. 
Uh, this is the deck I can also send out to you, Jared. Uh, normally, I would do a, a full hour kind of going over all of the different financing solutions. A couple of things I'll mention here as I'll go along because I know we're stretched for time here today. But in a nutshell is that we always start with a simple soft credit check. And for those of you that are maybe new to selling solar, this is one of the reasons that the lease and PPAs are a big deal is that that credit inquiry stays and remains soft. It never converts to a hard inquiry. So it allows customers to buy planes, trains, automobiles, boats, RVs, whatever they may, and gives them more buying power. So it doesn't go up onto their debt. So how this works, this is the PDF document, works as a table of contents. So I'm going to go over the product descriptions uh, and the finest products that we offer here, Jared, as you uh, requested, it, just so you have a nice clean snapshot as what these products look like. So starting at the top, going over to the left, just again for the name of our products and trying to keep it simple, if it has the word own in it, this is a customer-owned system. That means they own everything. They own the tax credits, uh, any type of rebates. There's no production guarantee in these these own products, uh, but you know everything is owned by the customer. It's their responsibility to go apply for them. Anything from a lease over to a PPA products, these are third party. Yours truly, Everbright, owns these products. We warranty and we do the mom coverage around here, as I, I share in the training. Okay, and The mom coverage is, is we're going to do the maintenance, the operations, and the monitoring. So the names are Ever Easy and Ever Easy Plus for our lease products. Anytime you use the word plus in any of our vocabulary, that means you're adding one or multiple batteries. Now, one of the things that might be a little bit different than some previous contracts, which you've done before, but if you start with the solar only project, such as the Ever Own, as an example, and you get 30 days, 60 days into the project, and the customer looks up and goes, hey, you know what? I changed mine and want to add batteries. You need to cancel that contract. But we will start a new project with a Never Own Plus, which will be the batteries. Now, as long as nobody's names have changed on the title of the uh, document and signing for the contract, we will take the credit that's already been pulled and automatically qualify them so you don't have to do another credit run. But if a homeowner is adding, uh, going from a solar to a solar plus battery, they do have to go through the new digital checklist, uh, which is, again, digital and format electronic. And I'll show you uh, quickly on that how it works. But I want to focus over to the far right hand side on these PPA products, Jared, as you mentioned. Uh, so very, very popular uh, what has really changed in California, as you already know, is that change from net 2.0 to 3.0 when you're not getting any credits for your net metering uh, energy that you're pushing back to the grid, unless it's for a very finite amount of days in the year and the time during the year. So to offset that and to keep the, the most uh, costs out of the system and to save the homeowner the most, we offered right now presently in California only this product called Power Shift. Now, do I believe this is going to roll out to the rest of the United States in the future? More than likely, yes. This will follow because of other net metering rules start beginning to button up and change, and they start paying you, you know, two cents, three cents a kilowatt hour for that excess energy. They'll probably follow suit from California. So that Power Shift basically it gives batteries one or multiple that's added. But instead of using that battery as a battery backup system to your home, either on a partial or full home backup, it only basically shifts the energy from your solar to your battery and then from your battery either to your home for consumption at peak times or at times when maybe we send it back to the grid and the homeowner can make a larger bank on it when they're, they're paying, you know, two, three dollars per kilowatt hour at a couple of peak seasons. So the Everfix Plus and the Power Shift products in California are the two most popular uh, products in California right now, followed by the EverOwn Plus. And in a nutshell, if you're selling in California, you're not doing your service and you're doing your customer a disservice by not adding a battery because you need it to make the numbers work. I've seen designs come in where they've tried to do a solar design at 130% offset. And because they didn't have any batteries in it, you can never save any money on it. So you got to make sure to add batteries in, in California. So for those non-California markets, uh, we just had a training this morning. It's very interesting. Market dynamics are changing across. Oh, no, the United thank you. I appreciate it. I have the self one. Hold on. I'm Oops. sorry. I muted him. I got him. Okay. 
Uh, so one of the things that was very exciting to me on today's training that's been coming back is we've been getting feedback from homeowners, but it appears that more and more uh, homeowners all across the United States are now concerned about grid reliability and stability. And that is one of the reasons that more homeowners now all across the United States and all regions are actually interested in batteries now um, is for those power outages and the grid instability. You know, the cost savings is still definitely up and to the right as far as one of those reasons. But if it is on that PPA and, and projects that we have and we do sell these uh, in pretty much all across the United States, you know, we give you guys some very competitive, uh, you know, floor line levels on pricing in hopes that you guys can just sell this stuff like there's no tomorrow. Love it. Okay, a couple questions. One, um, on the power shift, right? You know, let's say homeowners like, yeah, we don't need backup. We don't need backup. Three years in, four years in, they're starting to have some blackouts and they're like, shit, we messed up. We didn't do it, you know. Are, do they have the ability, the capability to turn their system into a backup system um, in the future? Or do are they like stuck for 25 years without it? Yeah, great question. Uh, so the answer is, is you're never stuck. It's just how are you going to go about doing that? So one of the, th the things that happens with power shift is you don't get the gateways for that back weight control. You don't have your circuit split up as to you've got a you know sub panel someplace or maybe even doing a full panel kind of upgrade. But you got to have some electronics to control that energy. And you also have to have that automatic disconnect switching that converts and shuts the power that's coming off from the grid. So anything can always be modified in the future. The key thing is, at this time, uh, we don't offer financing to do that kind of project. So that might be a cash deal or maybe a credit card or a tax return or something like that, that that homeowner, because I don't know that any financier does offer that small minimum amount sure. of, uh, of upgrade change, but that will also require that you'll have to probably more than likely, depending upon the, the utility or the uh, AHJ that you're in, you may have to go through a repermitting process because you may have to turn the power on and off to put in that switching gear. Okay, so it can be done. Um, they'll just have to pay for it out of pocket. That's fine. And then do they have to go through a certified install? Like, I don't know if power would currently, let's say, you know, we don't currently go out and do that as of this time, but would mm -hmm. they, can they contact Everbright and, do you guys have a preferred vendor that you could say, yep, they'll do the work and they could pay for it themselves and make the conversion if they wanted to? Uh, we would just lean to to you because that's usually the homeowners are always going to contact you first. And then you okay. would just reach out to see if one of your installation crews, which they do these things every day. You know, okay. uh, if, if it's set up one way, I'm sure they would entertain, you know, doing side work, uh, you know, to do an upgrade or exchange, even if it includes, you know, adding a couple of extra panels. Okay, cool. Love it. Great there. And uh, real quick, also back to the credit thing. Obviously, we know that these do not hit on your, it's a soft credit check or soft pull until M1. And then it, the, it has become a hard inquiry on their credit. But does the monthly payment get added to their DTI or the revolving monthly payments? Or is it no, because it's not a loan? It, it does not, because it's okay. not a loan. Yep. Perfect. Uh, yeah, guys, yes. that's a huge advantage when doing a PPA. No yep. debt. No debt. Absolutely. Now, here's the other thing, too, is that when you do run uh, our credit check and it comes back, now some homeowners may qualify for all of our products, meaning it could be a RIC or a PPA lease project, or they may only qualify for one or the other. The reason behind that is because of the credit requirements and stipulation. So as an example, on a PPA or lease, we may have more homeowners as long as they have a 650 FICO score that will uh, qualify for that because we're not looking at that homeowner's debt to income. On the other hand, if a homeowner's just moved into a home and they just barely because of today's rates, and of course, as we know, prices of homes have all went down significantly, right? Uh, huh. that, that debt to income there, maybe right on the border. So that's going to be a little harder maybe to that homeowner to qualify for a RIC, but they could absolutely qualify for a PPA or lease because we're not looking at that. And as it states right here at the bottom, that is the big key seller here. And this is what I share with people. Do not get lost in the fact that because you know people have cash, 
that they're always going to just pay cash. And just because uh, they have a lot of cash doesn't always mean that they want to own the system. There's a lot of company or customers out there that do not want this showing up on their credit. This remains on a soft credit. It, it gives them more buying power. And as I always say to people is that all you got to do is go look at your local Mercedes or BMW. How many of those people don't buy a, uh, the product? They don't pay cash. They don't take a RIC loan out. They lease it, right? So this is why a PPA and lease is for all people. Now, it's definitely even more beneficial for, for any of those that may not have a tax liability. This is a definitely because we're responsible for that tax liability. And even though we're not giving any money or the government's not giving any money or the utility or anybody else is giving re rebates back to that homeowner, it is a way for the customer to get into solar and pay less for their energy than the utility is paying not only today, but also in the future. Great points. Great points. Love it. Oh, and do you have a quick question or should we just save it till the end? Um. It's more relating to California and system add-ons. Um, maybe I can just get it out quickly here. If I have a client that already has solar on their house, and now I'm adding a system in with the battery, uh, will your, I'll call them underwriters or techs, uh, allow us to incorporate that system into the battery? Ooh, that's a very great question. So I would say the answer is a yes and no situation. So we do allow second systems to be installed, first of all. Number two is, so as long as we are able to monitor the solar and the battery on a independent, whatever the homeowner is upsizing and putting in from Everbright, we need to see that individually. So if they, they've bought a Tesla system before and they've got Tesla monitoring, we can't just combine those panels into our monitoring uh, setup that we have, whether you choose Enphase, Solar Edge, whoever it may be. Perfect. And and I guess the and the other complication there is is now we're asking our company to get involved with the previous system, which may void warranties, and now we're on the hook for their system. And I know we want to avoid that, um, but now that's good. Something that we can look into. All right. Um, yep. Cool. Thank you for answering that. So it's a yes and a no case by case situation on. Yep. Uh, all right. Go ahead. Feel free to move on though. These are great. Okay. Real, real quick about these credit, you guys, 650, you just, you know, no bankruptcy. Uh, they're not even tripping on DTI. Uh, you know, as long as they're making their payments on time and they're on title, it's, I haven't been, <clears throat> I haven't had a denial with Everbright yet. So, uh, which is awesome. Yep. So the other thing that I guess I would uh, say is, is most important here is that when you look at the title and ownership. So one of the things that we immediately do uh, as it relates to the uh, credit and title split is as soon as you create your first quotation, okay, this is not you presenting it to the homeowner, but as soon as you create a quote in our system, we will automatically run title before we run before you run the credit. The reason that we want you to do this also is that it will save time, reduce errors, and get your application as well as your contract all buttoned up with the right legal name. And I know that everybody on this phone has had these contract issues where, you know, John John Henry gives you his nickname and it's Jonathan Henry the third is his legal name. And you've had to go back and update your contracts. You've had to go back and update, you know, credit uh, reports, et cetera. So if it is a home that's existing, as soon as you run that title, it will backfill automatically the first, and you can click a button to add a second homeowner's name on, that's on title of that if it's you know two people on the title of the home that want to be on the contract. So make sure you keep those names and don't update those homeowner's names. That will give you a better shot at running credit and getting a hit, and it will definitely pass through uh, title a lot quicker. Now, the only app times that you wouldn't do this in the cautionaries at the bottom here is that manually changes are allowed, but it's mainly for new home projects or a business or trust. Uh, the reason is, is that it may not be titled in the right company name or individual name if they haven't recorded the uh, title yet properly at the AHJ. 
If it's a business or trust, just be careful and look at it because sometimes our system, what we found out was it will populate the business name and we need the actual application applicant's name to be populated on that. So little simple things there, but can make a big difference in the end of it. Can so we put the, the can we run it under an LLC if title's under an LLC? Um, it still has to be a name when you run for the um, when you run for the credit check. Run for the credit check, but can the contract be under? Because if I if I have my home under an LLC or a trust, right? They're good. That's going to be on title. So we're running yep. my credit, but then the contract will be under the LLC. That's fine, or it'll be under my name. But you guys can see that I'm the uh, I'm the owner of the trust or the LLC. Is that that's all yep. good. Yeah, okay. that's, that's that's all good. Uh, and I thought I had it right here, but I'll, I'll walk you through this real quick. So real real quick difference too. the other big highlights. And these are really the highlights I want to point out is is what I'm trying to get your team. Just and, know, and really quick, David, I, just to, just so you don't waste time. I don't believe we are offering RICs at this time. We are only offering okay. PPA. So you could skip that stuff for now. But yeah, you yep. can talk about the PPA. Yep. No, no problem. Yep. So the only difference there is our term length, right? Is the biggest difference is a 25 year is always why? Because the customers always want to get the lowest payment. Now we know that these systems are going to be in operation 35 years plus. Okay. Just because of the technology, you do have to choose an escalator option. It has to be one of these values. The way our pricing structure is set up is you can make more money at the higher percent of escalator options that you quote it. So if utility is charging six, eight, 10, percent per year escalator a 3.9 percent escalator is a really good deal i encourage you build some projects in our system and you do like for like quote them both at the same you know so i did a home in california quote them both at 25 cents 25 years i do one at 3.9 percent i do one at zero percent so what you will find is if you quote it at zero percent your monthly payment is going to be higher in that first year as soon as you sign a contract, then if you sign it at 3.9%. So that's going to take, you know, six to eight years before those, those escalators bring that price up to match that 0%. So it's really healthy and really good for those homeowners that say, hey, I'm probably only going to be in this home for seven more years. You definitely want to put them on that 3.9% because that way they're saving the most money right now. And, and for the most part, Every homeowner I speak to, they're looking for a way to save money right now, today. I don't care about tomorrow. I might not be here next year. Yeah, right? The other so, thing is, is when is your money worth the most, you guys, because of inflation? It's worth the most today. They might save right more now. money overall with the 0% escalator, but they're going to save more money today with the value. If you do the formulas and the math, they're actually saving more money by going, by doing, going that route. Great point. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we want to make this easy also for not only from you guys selling, but also from the, the people that are purchasing and decide that, hey, one day I want to sell my home because we know that always happens. So we have a couple of different options here. If that new buyer comes in and says, hey, put me on the credit check, I'll go for it. Uh, you know, more than likely they're going to pass anyway with our 650 credit score being required. But if they go, no, hey, look, I'm just buying a house. I'm at, you know, my debt to income is really, really questionable. I don't want my credit run again. No problem. Either the seller or the buyer can send us a $250 exemption check and we will exempt them from a credit uh, uh, run. And they can, you know, pick up exactly where that homeowner left off as far as transferring the contract. Uh, they could purchase the system outright. They could prepay all the remaining monthly payments and then transfer the use of the system only. All of these options, because they are a PPA and because they are predefined, the homeowner will see that in their contract. They don't even have to pick up the phone to call anyone. It will be in the exhibit, A, B, C, D. I think we've got about three or four exhibits in there. But in one of those exhibits, they can at any time know exactly what that payoff uh, if they wanted to do that. Now, I don't think that's the best of interest. The reason for that is that, remember, mom is watching out for, for you. This is ever bright. So the maintenance operation monitoring will continue forward as long as we still have a contract in place, even if it's transferred. Now, if you do get that fancy homeowner that just says, hey, look, I just you know made an inheritance. I just want to pay this system off. Uh, how much is it? So one of the th only exceptions that we have is that if you're the original homeowner, you've got to wait until the sixth year uh, that the system was put into service before they can actually make that payoff. Now, they can always pay it off at the end of the term or if the property is sold. 
So the final thing I want to note on this is that at the end of this term on this 25 years, the reason I mentioned that we know panels are going to work for 35 plus years is if they get to year 25, uh, they got a choice. They can have Everbright to remove this at no cost. Uh, they can purchase system right out from Everbright. But if they give us no notice of any of these things, we're going to continue for 10 more years or up to 10 more years, one year terms to renew this. So they're going to be individual annual renewal terms, and it's going to be at the equal price equal to the 25 uh, year escalating rate of their annual increase. That's great. Uh, and then real quick, you guys, huge point, you know, we always say, Hey, you know, you could transfer the loan. Um, if they're doing, a, if they're doing a purchase option, the problem with that is, you know, sometimes their DTI is super tight to qualify for the house. They might, that might kick them off of qualifying for the home. They won't get the home. This does not affect your DTI. So transferring over that monthly payment to the new homeowner is not going to make a difference whatsoever in them qualifying uh, for the home with their home loan. So that is very huge there. Um, we're talking about the annual increasements. We could talk about that. A lot of people are asking about the warranty. Okay, I want to talk about your guys' warranty. Uh, and especially when it comes to batteries, someone asked, now, when you when you guys are doing a PPA, your warranty is for the time of the agreement, the 25 years. Batteries are included in that. In California, we are cycling these batteries fully every single day and night. Um, what does your warranty include on the batteries? When would you replace it? Is it just one replacement per battery? Can you dive into that a little bit? Yeah, so in every contract, there's a clear outline of the warranty information. So I just want everyone to know that, you know, I would encourage you to also look at those. You can even look at a pre-contract before someone signs it, to, you know, to look at all that. But, uh, you know, that that's everyone should always be reviewing that. So we do do the maintenance, the operation and the monitoring for that full 25 year period of time. And at the end of 25 years, if we do take it off, we will come back, pull off all of that product, and we we will recycle. So that's part of the warranty, right? And to me, that's a big deal. You know, who wants to get up there and recycle all this stuff and go through that hassle and figure that out? So that's number one. Number two is we will replace uh, or uh, make sure that the roof is is tightened up where we the solar was actually installed to make sure that it's watertight. Number three is there's not a very good likelihood that you're ever going to throw any of these lithium batteries away anytime soon. Batteries, and specifically with these lithium ions, they have a really stealthy warranty. So every battery that type, kind of product that we sell today is going to have at least a 70% or greater output by year 10. So you don't throw the batteries away. If if you come to that point where you know your savings is not as good, or you want to just have more storage because you know you're you're using more kilowatt hours uh, in the afternoon than your battery is able to to hold for you, so you want to you know add another battery to it. That's what you would do. You would just continue adding batteries to it to increase that capacity. But you know at this point, I don't think anybody's going to be throwing any batteries away in 20 years. Now we haven't set a specific guideline at this point, and that's what one of the things that we are waiting for more, you know, uh, verification on our end is that, is there a point in time as to, and what that percentage might be that we would come out and actually replace that. So we haven't defined that as a hundred percent, but as soon as we do, that will be updated, you know, in our warranty information, and that would be available to all homeowners. All right. Perfect. Great. Love it. Um, digital welcome checklist. Where is it found? Is it, do they log in? Like, is it, or can you provide that for us? Cause so that way we can just knock it out when we're with the homeowner. Can we do it yep. immediately after they sign the, the HIC? Yeah. So basically the, the digital checklist, as soon as they um, sign a contract, we will automatically, our system generates an email and it sends directly to the homeowner. We have a nice video and a PDF document that you can download from this, this document by clicking here. And the email that I just sent to you, Jared, there, there is one about the digital uh, checklist. It's the video. So you can watch that fully uh, from start to finish. The nutshell of it is that 
it, it, it comes to the homeowner. We already know their email address. So the only thing that they need to do is create a password. Once they've created a password, that becomes their username and password. As soon as they then log in, the first message that they're going to get is they're going to ask to sign up uh, the Everbright, uh, uh, sorry, answer the digital welcome checklist questions. It is going to ask them some identity questions before they get there. And the reason for that is obviously for the homeowner's protection. So if anybody's ever, you know, applied for a loan or try to have something reset, you know, with your credit card, they're, they're always going to ask you some of those random questions like, you know, hey, David House, uh, in 1995, you lived in this address in California. What was it? You know, and they give me four different options and I got to remember back in 1995, okay, what was my address out there? So it is some of those random questions. But right now we've had, I think, over a 95% acceptance rate. Um, you're always going to get those some customers that don't feel comfortable with the uh, technology. They don't feel welcome, you know, of doing it or whatever, and they just want to speak to someone. We can always still do that. But the reason that we want to encourage this is this is going to give them access to their My Everbright account. And you don't want to be sending contracts or payment issues or payment questions or uh, monitoring information. Once they've created that ac account, now they have that My Everbright and when they're finished with their project and you've got permission to operate and turn that system on, they're going to be able to see monitoring them there. They're going to be able to see all of their contracts. They're going to be able to see their payments, what they've paid, late charges, whatever, whatever. So it's a great thing to encourage them to continue to do that. And it's really a sample of uh, questions of yes or no to answer. So how that questions will look, if you go into on this right-hand side picture here, if you go in preview your contract before you send it to your homeowner, you can actually review these questions with that homeowner or just take a gander at it yourself, you know, before you send that over for signing. It's really best to cover these with the homeowner and then it makes it even easier for the homeowner because they're like, oh yeah, we reviewed those questions. So they just go down through there and, you know, click yes, 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 yes. And, and on the way you go. So we do, have, do it at the time of sale, you guys, like after you, after they do the yeah. HIC, Go through and do it. And then when they log in, you know, because that's where their Everbright agreement is and they're going through, they upload their ID, they sign their contract. It's right there. It's a next step welcome checklist right there where they're logged in. Is that where it's at? Um, no. <clears throat> what, what will happen is when they sign that contract, then the, our system will send an email to that homeowner's email. So whatever email you have on file. So they'll have to check their email because they, they then have to create a uh oh, okay. create an account yeah they that have comes to create right their, after the contract right after okay cool yeah Perfect. It's, i mean it, it should be you know a couple minutes at the most yeah so re really the idea here is no lag time so that you can get all this done when when you're in the, the home uh be outstanding now if you run into any kind of issues this is the support at myeverbright.com or this is the homeowner dedicated line at 833-830-0475. Now, one of the things on support I want to mention to you just to call this out. So starting April the 7th, and I know this this is a, a deck that we just have in a training module that uh, was a little pre preliminary, but I wanted to get you the latest, latest here. So April the 7th, we will no longer be open on Sundays, which really shouldn't impact you because with that digital welcome checklist, you should be able to get all those deals you know, signed and the, your welcome check move forward. Um, and then our operations here, 6 a.m. to 8, Monday through Friday, Pacific. And then Saturday is 8 to 5 Pacific Standard Time. For you installers, uh, that includes, you know, uh, everybody that's on this call today. 877 is the number that you need to use. 877-465-2496. Uh, make sure, you know, that you don't call into the homeowner support because they won't have a clue of most of the things that you're asking about. Because they're, they're two different groups of people uh, qualified and trained to do two different complete type of support questions. Any Love questions it. on that? Okay. No, no questions on that. Um, we are running up against it, but I do want to get a few more questions in. Chris has his hand yep. raised, but real quick, I do want to talk about, all right. Homeowner decides to go solar. They signed their contract with Everbright. They're fired up. We go out there. We do the site survey. The tilt's a little bit off the azimuth. We do a shading report. We come in, we plug in the correct numbers 
Now we need to do a change order because let's say their production went up 500 kilowatt hours annually. Um, can you explain the reason why that is for everybody that doesn't quite understand that? Because it does make sense once you know, but I feel like it's good to give the homeowners a heads up because they are paying a price per watt, right? And it's, you know, the production is based on the kilowatt hour production. Can you go yep. over that real quick? Love to and and would be happy to. Uh, so the shade start steady here. So when you first go into our system, and are, are you guys using Jared exclusively third parties, or do you sometimes use ours if it's available? Uh, we build it out in Vision or Solo, but mainly Vision, and then we take that, we transfer it, it over. But I do believe we use your guys's um, software okay. once we get in there. Yep. So we basically use Google Maps as a primary. So if you're building systems on our, our platform, it will go to Google Maps or Google HD, which is Project Sunroof. And then the second option, you can hit a drop down. I'll show you where that's at here. Or you can try Near Map. Those are our two different things. So the biggest thing, Jared, is that whatever the live design, and I'll show you in our system here. I've got some screenshots on it. The live design always needs to match your shade report and, and whole values. And this is where a lot of people go wrong, is that you get your shade report, and then it's not brought back and pulled into the Everbright Live project of all values of all months, including the azimuth and tilt. So I'll show you how to do that, but it can make a little bit of difference. And in this is a, our platform view. So this drop down arrow here is where you would drop down if you wanted to select near map or Google Maps when you're building that out. Uh, when you actually get ready to to do all your edits and let's say you finished all of your edits this is one of the easiest way we use a color code so let's say you came into this home and let's say that you know you took off one panel off of this this roof uh because when you got there you didn't see this vent cap over here right so you already picked them up here and you got that but now you're one panel short of your actually what you built when you come back into this uh, live design and then you take off this panel, what you're going to look for is to see what happened to your generation. If your generation remains as a green, it means that you do not have to inform the homeowner of this change order. Okay. If this goes to red, that is what's going to automatically require that you need to install the homeowner and get a homeowner change order signed and complete it before you generate your installer change order, which comes to us. So the reason for this, is, and this is also a pricing issue, Jared, that, that uh, oftentimes surfaces. So we know that, you know, this tilt, this, this azimuth can change a little bit. We know that these values can change a little bit between one, one uh, <clears throat> shade report compared to another report. That's why we allow this negative 5% and plus 10%. So if you go up, you know, some plus 10% or you better yet, if you go down like minus 5%, sometimes people think, oh, we got to tell the homeowner that. Well, when you get ready to do that homeowner change order, that's where you need to take special attention and look at that price. Because what the price is going to do is it's going to automatically try to update the new kilowatt per uh, rate based upon the annual production of what you have in the system. And it's always going to try to keep it the same. So if you set it at 17 cents at the initial, you come and take this panel, it might raise it to 18 cents trying to keep the monthly payment the same. So we do this to try to help you guys, you know, to to keep the pricing. But if you want that price to always just go 0.17 and no matter what your change is, you still want it to show them 0.17, all you have to do is just generate the new quote so that it's the same price. Okay, so generating the new quote. And but and you are saying it after we do the shade report, enter in the uh you know the proper data, let's say it goes up, you know, 200 kilowatt hours. You're saying that their monthly payment will not change because that's less than the 10% threshold. It, it should not change. Yeah, but just always make sure that your ki per kilowatt hour pricing is staying the same. The same. You could actually, it could go up 10%, uh, you know, above this amount. But, and but uh, I guess okay. but if we're paying, let's say it's 18 cents per kilowatt mm -hmm. hour. 
and they're getting yep. 10,000 kilowatt hours during that year. But then it comes back at 10.5, which would be a 5% increase. Wouldn't you're, you're saying that they don't have to pay 18 cents per month or, you know, like their price is not going to increase because it's only 500 kilowatt hours additional for that year. Correct. Okay. That's good to because, know. Yeah. Because you don't have to get that homeowner change order because you're, you're within that plus 10% tolerance. Okay. But just make sure you check when you generate that, when you generate that, it's, it, you have to attach it to a quote. So you just always want to make sure you check your quote and make sure your quote is exactly how you want it, you know, to, to, uh, to pull from. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Listen, I know we are up against it. We have two hands raised. We're going to go through those and then we're going to wrap up this recording. And then if you want to stay around for a couple more questions, um, yep. I, I'm, and then Tom, if you're monitoring questions in the chat, uh, maybe we can run through some of those as well. Chris, you have patiently had your hand uh, raised. What do you have for Mr. David House? Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, just in general with the battery replacement, there's no mention of it that I've been able to find in the contract. How do you get over that hurdle with customers that want to see that their battery will be replaced during the contract term? Yeah, so the way I would... would uh use it right now is we are still in process of fine tuning the details on that replacement but we don't anticipate these batteries needing to be replaced uh definitely not in the first 10 years more than likely not even the first 20 years um i used to i i uh sold solar for tesla as well as sun power um, and I'm telling you that is that if you even go look at these cars and these lithium ion batteries, they're really going still strong, even on, on Tesla, you know, they've had a few little modules here and there. Um, but on the, the, uh, S model type of cars and they're 15 years into it and they're still not replacing batteries. No, so I agree. I mean, my Model S has lost very little range in the last eight years since it was manufactured. Um, it's a pretty small degradation. So totally yep. agree with that. But it's really how do you overcome the objection within the agreement, which doesn't specify there's any battery replacement? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, with with it, and I get it, you know, um, and, and all I could say and encourage you is that you know we're still working through that you know to to find out finalize that you know to figure out is it a percentage is it you know how many kilowatts that we measure is it a time you know what what, what are the surroundings of that but uh, i think what you're going to find too is that you know in time as the technology becomes you know con convincingly uh superior than even what it is today as they can continue to have breakthroughs is I think we'll end up getting into some technology where they will even begin extending that warranty from 10 years to 15 years, just right out of the box. I don't think we're there this year. I don't think we're there next year, but I do see that that is something that should be coming in the future as well. Awesome. Yeah. And then if you do look on the warranty, it does say the system up at the top when it talks about the warranty and the batteries are obviously part of the system. So it doesn't single out batteries specifically but it is part of the system so that's how i've had to overcome it uh in the past hopefully that helps you out chris thank you appreciate that and then just quick follow-up on the point you're making with like adding a panel or adding a battery to a system so is a, a homeowner able to do that they just need to they need to notify everbright and then the agreement it says any modifications or improvements would become part of everbright system and under their ownership so they could do that, but the catch would be it's then Everbright's panels and battery that they're adding to the agreement. Is that how that works? It, are you talking about a second system or just the initial system? The initial system. So like earlier, they, someone brought up what if they wanted to, um, let's say, switch the battery from non-backup to backup. Will that be a yep. system modification? And there's a no alteration section within the agreement. So that would void that. So just wondering what what would be the process to point a customer in those situations when it came up? Yeah, so so what what you'll have to do is let's say let's say it was even a PPA. So if you start it with an ever fixed that it, that was just a solar only kind of project, 
And before you got to permission to operate, okay, this has to happen before you get the permission to operate on the original system. And they said, hey, I want to add a battery. As long as, you know, they can qualify for it uh, through through the credit that we've run and, you know, there's no issues on, you know, credit capturing that kind of stuff. Then what you will have to do is you can't just do a simple change order. You have no, no, to- No, David, David, really yeah. quick, sorry to cut you off, but what he's referring to is like, if they're like five years in and they want to add a battery or they wanted to add backup to their existing batteries, he's saying okay. in the contract is there's no modifications to the system. Otherwise it voids the warranty. How would you get around that? Yes. So if it was a Everbright system, all right, uh, we will treat it just as though, let's say that that system was a Tesla system originally put in. So even if it is a, uh, Everbright system. So let's say last year you put in an Everbright system at this home and later this year they come up and they say, Hey, look, I'd like to add some more panels. And also I'd like to add a battery that requires a brand new contract as an Everfix plus. And since we do own that, then we will still have to have separate monitoring of those systems because you're going to, uh, under, remember, we, we do a, a guarantee of production on our PPAs. So if we did this one that was a year ago, we have every two years that we have to have a true up with the homeowner to make sure that if it doesn't produce enough, then we owe the customer. So if by now, this year in 2024, they're adding new stuff. We just need to have that monitoring set up, but it will be set up as a standalone system separate because they're on different timelines for their warranties. Okay, Got and it. then if so, they were so the answer is really you can't. It's a separate independent system altogether. Correct. It's not but my question is, original. if they wanted to add backup to their existing system with the battery, is it going to void warranty if we come out there and add the components to make it backup? It should not. It should not. Okay, I guess it, it, Chris, it you, just not. email them and talk to them about it, and just say David yep. said it should not. So. Sure. Yeah, uh, it's in the no alterations clause in section E if you want to check that out. So that's that that's um, the section I was referring to that says you can't modify the system, which would essentially be any add-ons or modifications to make a non-backup a backup or anything like that. It does say yeah. you could make modifications with Everbright permission. So I think that's that's the path to go down. But then any of those modifications become um you know the the asset of everbright so if, if you were adding yeah. those panels it would become part of the system and everbright's um property per per how i'm reading the agreement right right now right so and so right now and let me let me just state this so for right now we we are probably staying hard and true on that and that's simply because we don't offer the battery standalone finance now, if yeah. should in the future, which I think that, you know, that's the plan at some point that we will do, then that would probably be an exception to you being able to go back and modify an existing product because right now we just don't have the ability, you know, to finance it, that solar system. You got totally. It. And, uh, and I could add on, uh, like, for the sellers, you, you shouldn't be modifying an old system because you would then change the interconnection agreement. And if they're in them too you could unfortunately cause that customer to have to reapply the entire system by modifying it in an M3 instead of adding a separate system under the new net energy metering agreement. You got it. Hey, real quick. Sorry, you guys. Um, we have like five minutes. Okay. Uh, so Al, you had your hand raised. Zach, we'll do a quick one. Owen, and then we'll, we'll yes. wrap this up. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it quick. <laughs> I have just three small questions. Thank you, Dave, for going, uh, David, for going uh for uh, this explanation yes. quick, for um designing the the panels can we launch the auto design so this will avoid this issues you just mentioned the second question that uh, once the customers design uh, the agreement on uh, everbright can we actually show them everything in detail before you sign because i have some Customers, they want to see everything on papers, with including the warranty, the panels, what they get in, the production, all this kind of stuff before they sign it. The last thing, once they sign this with Everbright, if there's any additional agreement they have to sign beside Everbright, I'm thinking. 
Yeah. So yeah, a couple of questions there. So first question um, answer is, is that no, our live design does not uh, alter that you still have to make sure that your shading report, if, if it doesn't come up or if you're going to use a third party shade. So the live design, just think of it as you're just getting a live design built for you. So you're still going to be responsible for updating your shade. Yep. Okay, so that's that's question one. Question two was about if you want to make a change, um, it depends on what that change is that you're wanting to make as to whether or not we allow that change to be made. So if if the homeowner comes in and says, hey, I want, you know, this whole side of my roof to be re-roofed, then we will not allow that change because we don't allow those dollars, you know, to be able to do for a full re-roof. I'm not sure if that's where your question was about, but I'm just giving one example of a change. It, was there a specific change that I should address? No, that that that, uh, that part is fine. I was uh, mentioning okay. if Perfect. Uh, the customer, they want to see everything on paper yeah. uh, before they sign. Can we give them something showing in papers before they sign? You would have to run credit. Just I'll, I'll answer that. You have to run yep. credit in order to generate the contract. That's the only way that there is no workaround on that. Yeah. So they can run credit. It's a soft credit check. They can see the credit. You know, it's not even going to show up on their credit, but you will have to do that to produce the document. All right. And then, um, all right, Zach, what do you have, brother? All right. Maybe, maybe I'm a little slow today, but I, I just want to get like this, like, so 100% batteries, 25 years. Are they covered? Yes or no? Because that, like, there was a lot of answer there when you gave it. So maybe I'm just a little slow today. Uh, it's it's not that you're slow. We do provide a 25 year warranty. Uh, the first 10 year warranty is actually, and and Jared, I don't know if you guys as an installer are signed up through our Omidian, um, you know, uh, facilitators for for doing service rows and stuff. But whether you are or whether you're not, we, we have an Omidian network. It's all across the United States. So normally the way that's going to happen on these warranty inquiries that come in on a battery, the first step is they usually always the homeowner is going to call to the installer that originally did it. If you guys are signed up for that, then there's monies to be made that we pay you to go out and do any kind of investigation when we need you to go out and do that investigation. But the first call should always be back to us so that we can check the monitoring and see how the actual is, is, is performing. So that first 10 years, uh, I believe that it's the way that the contract was written. Uh, you as the installer would actually more than likely do the work for us, but you would be paid to do it. So if there was an issue in that first you know, 10 years of that batter, you guys would do it. Outside of that, it would then roll into our Omidian company to do it. Now, on the 25 years, and the thing that, it, that I was sharing and stated a couple of times was we don't have a specific you know, warranty guideline that says at this percentage or at this time uh, or at exactly what condition would we even replace it or uh, add another battery has not been fully completely inked and signed at this time. I'm but sure, the but if the battery is not working, a battery is not working. I mean, you guys will replace that. Um, Absolutely. It's not a threshold yeah. on the percentage on that. Um, so yeah, hopefully working, that answers that. Working. And then David, we're going to have to have you back on because I mean, as you can see, people have questions. We mm -hmm. love the new product. Owen, real quick, and then we got to jump. I have a hard out. Kind of more of a comment though on system add-ons. Um, since you guys have to have monitoring accurate, um, or like I, I've, I've done a lot of it and we talk about modifications. If a breaker remains in place for a solar system and you add a battery with new solar, you're not really modifying that system that's original. Um, I, I guess the question that some people probably have is, can we integrate the other system to be put into the new battery, i.e. like Franklin, which can work with all of those products, um, is that allowed to be incorporated with the contract? With another installer system, or are you saying with that or with a pre-installed Everbright system as well? Uh, another installer system. 
Yeah. So if it's another installer system, we cannot. The reason we cannot is we still need to independently monitor that because we're providing that warranty, uh, which does require uh, the battery monitoring, the solar monitoring. And we do also now, you know, look at the whole home monitoring with the CT clamp requirement now being effective, excuse me, on April 1st, uh, you know, so that we can monitor the whole energy of the consumption of the home. So we still have to have our own standalone monitoring, um, you know, for the system that you're putting in for us. Got you. That that's All the right. only way, unfortunately, uh, to separate it. And well, look, oh, hey, Owen, dude, uh, I'm sorry, man, I got to cut you off because we have that's to good. jump. Um, David, thank you so much for coming on. Isha, I yep. really appreciate you guys. As you can see, I mean, you guys are awesome, awesome company, great product. Um, we're pushing it like crazy. And we'll have to have you back on. Do you guys do a weekly training on Power Calendar? Do you guys have someone that comes in there one hour a week for questions? Uh, I'm not aware of a, of a weekly. I, I don't know if I should. Are you still on or? Yeah, do you know yeah, that? yeah, yeah. We're still we're still here. So, oh, I don't oh, know okay. if he should still here. Um, yeah. I don't know if you do, but maybe we can get that set up because we have a lot of our partners come on once a week. It's a dedicated time slot. Um, and then they can ask these questions. Go ahead and drop your information in the chat. Everybody show David some love for coming on here. Super appreciate you guys. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this recording. Peace. You're welcome.